I cried and cried and cried. And several times I'll, I'll, I'll excuse myself and go to a quiet place just to cry so that nobody will tell me how to go about crying or how I have to cry or when, when I have to stop crying. Hi, welcome to another episode. This is a podcast on maternal and reproductive health, everything pregnancy and parenting. On today's episode, we will be talking about grief. How long does it take to grieve? Get over a child that you lost, whether it's through a miscarriage or stillbirth or premature delivery. How long does it take? to get over that pain of losing the one that you brought to this world and had to nurture and raise. Go nowhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back, thank you so much for following our channel and please, if you haven't subscribed, do well to subscribe because you want to definitely come back to more episodes. Like I mentioned, we'll be talking about grief. Some time ago, about a month or so, I came across um, a post on Facebook. There was a lady who made a post, posted it on a mother's group on Facebook. In the video, she was actually crying, grieving over her baby's stuff. And the caption read something like, God, Wayne, how long am I going to go through this? Apparently, she was losing a child for about a second time. So she was questioning and grieving and crying, looking at all the things that she had bought to welcome a baby. She actually gave birth to this child, but she couldn't go home with the child because, you know, the child passed away. And when I went through the comment section, I saw so many women not being empathetic. Some of the comments were harsh. Some people were like, get over that. You've mourned for so long. Get pregnant again and have another child. You'll get away. Right. Some were like, oh, it, was, she, it wasn't your child. It wasn't just yours. So stop crying and making a fool of yourself on social media. Get away. Right. Why should you even post a video of you crying? Sell those things and stop looking at the baby things so that you don't have to remind yourself of your child anymore. I found that a little bit harsh because... We cannot tell people how to grieve or how long they should grieve. Is there actually a timeline for grief? I don't think so. It doesn't matter for how long you've lost that child. You cannot tell a woman to get over a baby that she carried for nine months, give birth to that child, and she couldn't go home with that baby. You can't tell her to just sell her baby things and she'll forget. Do you think it's that easy? but I don't think it's that easy. I found the comments harsh and coming from women at that, I mean, how could women not understand this? You know, the kicks, the tricks and all, everything, the bond you build with your child over the nine months gestation period, it builds something in you as a mother. It might even be easier for the men to forget, even though I'm not sure they can forget. It might be easier for them to go past it, but a woman, for her to go past a child, even if it's just a miscarriage of 10 weeks or 12 weeks, it's not something that she can forget. If a woman can remind you that she had 10 miscarriages before eventually giving birth, do you think that is actually a child that you, you, know, you carried and gave birth to who passed away that you can actually forget? It's not possible to forget. So today I want us to share these stories. I will share my own personal experience. And some mothers are equally going to share how they are coping with the grief of their lost children. Now let's go to Helen. She is a mother of three. She lost a child. But how is she coping? Has she been able to forget about the child that she lost? Can she ever forget about it? How is she coping? So let's get to hear from her. Hi, Helen. Thank you so much for accepting to tell your story. Please, can you tell my audience who you are, what you do? In fact, just tell us about yourself. Hello, Renette and all the viewers. My name is Helen. I'm a teacher. I'm a wife and I'm a mother of three. And I'm very happy to be here today to share my story, to encourage other women. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Helen, you are a mother of 
three right now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're a mother of three. But before now, you've lost a child. Please, can you tell us how it happened and what happened that led to the loss of your child? When I got married, I, I was very excited. I thought about having a baby and being pregnant. And it was an experience I was looking forward to. When I finally got pregnant, I had many expectations. I had hopes. I had dreams, I had plans. The journey was okay. I was going for my antenat and everything was fine. I remember 30th of June, 2019. I woke up on a Sunday morning. I went to church. I came back, I was fine. Everything was fine. I had no signs, no distress, nothing. And I went out with my husband and then I came home at about 10 p.m. and then I just felt this pain on my back and that was it. I felt that maybe I was stressed out. I'd worked a lot. I needed to rest. And then I lay down and I was okay. But after a couple of minutes, the pain increased and he decided that we go to the hospital. So we left home that night. And when we got to the hospital, the midwife in charge just said she was going to check me. And then she said I was dilated fully. I was about six months, two weeks into my journey. And I was confused because I didn't know how. In fact, the word dilation did not make sense at the time she was saying it. I had a mixture of everything. Like I was going through a lot at the moment. I was confused. So I just started crying. The more she spoke to me to calm down, she encouraged me to calm down. I was just crying because the pain was there, the confusion was there, and everything was happening. At, at, in fact, <sighs> um, long story short, rather than taking care of me, she she started just telling me. Uh, um, she was speaking in French. She was just saying that delivery is 100,000. I, I, we have to deposit money. We have to do this. And I was angry and I was confused. So I was asking her, deposit money for what? I'm here in pain. You're asking about money. Go ahead. Let's do something first. Stop this pain. Stop this pain. Stop talking about money. And she was insisting that we pay money and all of that. So later on, I went into the labor room. And I had to push this baby out because the baby was fully formed. And oh, the pain, the stress, the fear, and everything happening all at once, the confusion. And this experience was so scary because when I finally went through the entire process and the child came out, the child was not even dead fully. The child was still struggling, struggling till the child bred and then gave up. And then there was this other confusion. The placenta had remained in me. Now the lady in charge started panicking. I was bleeding. I was also confused because I didn't know what was happening. And she was just running up and down until some other midwife this time it was a man. He had to come and help me, send his hand into my body to bring out the placenta and every other thing. It's frightful, painful, all the emotions you can you can you, you can imagine. Like I don't know, but that's how it happened. That's so sad to hear. That's so sad. Sorry about that. I know that you've gone ahead to have three other beautiful, joy-giving little human beings that you are so much, you know, adoring and giving them all the love and attention that they deserve. But do you think that, I mean, how are you coping? Have you forgotten about the loss of this, you know, first child? Have you, can you say you've forgotten about it? How has the grieving been for you? Just tell us about it. How are you managing it? How did I cope? <laughs> oh, 
there's no coping eh? there's really no coping you don't cope when <laughs> when you lose your baby you don't cope it's just a mixture of everything hopes dreams that have been shattered and everybody telling you too many things all at once so finally when i sat down in the world i started receiving phone calls because the news had normally gone out and people were calling me and telling me stuff like it's okay you're going to have other children god knows why and some people but will tell me that you're not the first person. I also lose the pregnancy and a child. And I had a miscarriage and some other thing. It's okay. You're going to cope and stuff like that. Ah, oh, there's no coping because all those things that they said rather made me feel bad and even worse. I cried and cried and cried. And several times I'll, I'll, I'll excuse myself and go to a quiet place just to cry so that nobody will tell me how to go about crying or how I have to cry or when, when I have to stop crying about it. Do you sometimes remember this child and wish the child was alive? Um, so far, I have three other children and I've not forgotten. And I don't think that is something I'm going to forget. Every now and then when something comes up, I look back and I'm thinking that what if this child was there? How would it be? Would life be the same? How would the child look like? What would it be like having this child around, holding her, it was female, holding her, maybe taking her somewhere? Would it be different? When I think about all these things, I, I just know that you'll, not, you'll never be the same without this child. And every now and then, when every year comes, within that same period when I, when I had the loss, I have memories about it. And every other time when I hear a story that another woman lost the baby or something similar happened, I reflect and I feel bad. And it's like the pain flushes over again. And it's like I grief all over again. So I don't think that it's something that I can get rid of or it's, it's going to stop. So every now and then I remember and I go through the same thing all over. But I'm very happy that I have other children and it's comforting that I have other children. Thank you so much, Helen, for sharing that story. I'm sure a lot of women must have learned one or two things from your story. There is no timeline for grief. Even if it's just, it's just a clot of blood that you felt came out of your uterus after you missed your period. I mean, there is usually that part of you that will keep wishing the baby grew and, you know, came to the world and actually lived. And there are so many women out there like that with such experiences and with very poor relations who do not know how to treat them or do not know how to bear with them in their period of grief. I remember in 2020, um, my husband and I actually lost a child. It's a story that many people do not know about because we've not told this story. But I am still looking forward to the day that we'll tell this story completely. But I just want to tell you that I have had an experience. I've lost a baby and until today, this is 2023, I've had another baby and expecting other babies, but I've not been able to forget about that baby that passed away. We were 31 weeks gone and we discovered that the baby would not survive because of some malformations. So the doctors advised us to terminate the pregnancy. It was a difficult decision that we had to arrive at. Not really terminating, we had to go through forced labor because at 31 weeks, I mean, which kind of termination are you going to do if it's not forced labor? So I had to, I actually gave birth to this child, but he didn't make it as the doctors presumed. He came out still birth. And in my innermost heart, I was wishing that that child should come out crying and everything should be fine and he'll be put in an incubator. You know, mothers, we never want to give up. Even when we are seen, the situation in front of us is um, deplorable. We do not want to give up. 
But the baby came out still birth. I remember my husband and some family members actually went to the cemetery, paid. There was a death certificate because it was a human being. The hospital had to give a death certificate. The council had to approve for the burial to be done at the cemetery. And I have never forgotten. I cannot forget. That's 2020. It has lived with me. It, con it continues to live with me every day. Sometimes I think, I remember, I wish the child didn't pass away. So I do not think that there is a timeline for women to grieve. When you see a woman who is going through the loss of her child, don't be quick to tell her to get over it. I remember we even gave out some of our baby stuff because each time my husband will come see me, I'm crying over them and, you know, just being dramatic, as he says. And I remember we gave them out because I could not just stand. Each time I see them, I'll be so emotional and just break down and all of that. But giving them out wasn't the solution. It didn't solve anything because I didn't give out the, you know, the egg that was wasted, you know, the period that was missed, the times that I actually suffered morning sickness, you know, the times that I slept in the hospital because of complications, all of those things remained with me, the memories, the sufferings, all the things that I went through, the pain, because false labor was such a painful experience for me. And I hope that one day I'm going to tell this story in full and tell you exactly what happened, how it happened, and how we, what women can do to actually avoid such births. So this woman that I saw on Facebook crying, people telling her to sell her stuff, you know, get over it, get pregnant. Do you think that getting pregnant for another baby or with another baby rather can actually wipe the memory of the lost one? It cannot. In the course of this podcast, I'm going to share with you what you can actually do to help these women who are going through a period of grieving a lost child. So even if you're close to a grieving family, a grieving couple who lost their baby, what can you do? If you've ever lost a child, maybe through miscarriage or stillbirth, it's okay for you to grieve. It's okay for you to cry. It's okay for you to remember and imagine how life would have been with your child, it's, it's perfectly normal. You're not abnormal. And it's okay for you to feel the pain all over again when things happen. And if you've not had another baby, it's still okay for you to cry and not hear what people tell you that another one is going to come and all of that and all of that. It's okay for you to grieve for as long as possible. And I don't think that you ever stop grieving. So hang in there, take all the time you need to heal, and I pray God will bless you with other children. We learn to live with our pain. It doesn't go away. The grief continues. Sometimes you just sit and you wish the baby didn't pass away. You see how calmly I'm talking on this episode because grief is something that you don't rush over. You just have to feel the pain, let it sink. Because there's usually, there are different stages of grief. There's a denial stage. When it just happens, you, you're in denial. You're like, I can't, this, this can be true. And then there's a stage where you get into the place of acceptance. You actually accept the situation that this has happened. Then you get into another stage of actually living with it, coping. So you find coping mechanisms. So it's not like you forget about what happened, but you find ways to cope. You move on, even though the pain is still there, the memory is still alive, fresh with you. Sometimes it's even difficult. It's difficult to know the exact words to tell somebody who's mourning or who's grieving. Because people usually say, oh, I feel your pain, but you cannot actually feel that pain. Because what they are going through is unique. Even if you've lost someone, but it's not exactly the same. So I know sometimes we say that to make the person feel like we are with them, we understand what they are going through. So it's difficult to find the right words, but there are a lot of things you can do. There are some things you can actually do to show concern, to show empathy, and to show that you understand their situation. Because someone who understands someone's grief will not put pressure on that person to get over it. So one of the things you can do is to lend them spiritual help. Pray for them in whatever you believe in. Pray to your God for them to give them comfort, 
Because it's only God that can comfort them, that can make them cope, that can help them find coping mechanisms. Pray that they find comfort. Maybe pray that God will bless them with, with new other babies so that they can actually find the warmth and the comfort that they are looking for, even though they will never forget the other one that passed away. You also have to be understanding and patient. If you actually understand what you are going through, because sometimes people will say, I understand, I feel you. If you feel them, you will be patient with them. You will give them all the time, the need to go through, process their pain, accept that this thing is happening to them and actually find ways to cope. And they will decide when they will stop going through that circle. Sometimes if you are an employer and a mother loses a child, you can give them some time off, maybe a month or a few weeks of you know time away so that they can they can take time to find themselves again. I remember when I, I lost the baby in 2020, I was a communications officer for an NGO and there was so much my workplace was looking up to me for, but I had to take a month off. Actually it was signed from the hospital that I should take a month of rest, doing nothing, just being home and healing. And I was so grateful that my employer understood and he granted me that one month leave. One other thing you can do when you, you're with someone who is grieving is offer them space to talk. Let them vent. Sometimes some people just want to cry on your shoulder. They just want to scream. They just want to let it out. They just want to lash out. Let them vent. Don't tell them, no, it's okay. Don't talk about it. It's okay. Don't choke the words in them, let them vent, give them space to talk. Because sometimes for some people, it is in talking that they find their healing. So if you're not going to give them your shoulder to talk, don't condemn them, don't rush them out of their healing. But if you're going to be present and give them support, one of the things you can do is let them talk, let, it, let them talk it out, see how they feel, shout, scream, you know, let them just let it out. And in the course of it, they might find their healing. Some other thing you can actually do to show someone empathy when they're grieving their lost child is affirm them. Yeah, Tell them how they feel is okay. They have the right to feel that way. Their feelings are valid. Don't just, some people will just like, ah, please, you're not the first person to lose a child. Is it the first, are you the first person to get pregnant and a child doesn't make it? No, that's not being kind. You, you're adding to their pain. Even if a hundred other women have gone through the same thing, hers is unique. And one other thing you can actually do, <laughs> it's not the least, I'll just end with this one. Sometimes you don't need to do anything because there is nothing you can do to help. No matter what you do, the situation would not change. So sometimes when, when you find someone grieving their lost baby and maybe they are venting, there is, don't just, don't do anything. Don't say anything. Just let them be, give them space, and they'll get over and come around. So when you tell someone or a couple who just lost a baby, just a few words, I'm sorry for your loss. I am here if you need anything. You don't have to say much. How third parties behave when people are grieving is really important. Avoid saying things that are triggering. Offer support and not solution. Don't try to tell them what to do and how to feel. Just let them know that you're there to help them in case they need anything. I'm sure you learned something and you're going home with a powerful lesson. Please drop a comment if you're a mother or a parent who has lost a child before and you want to share it with us. Please drop a Drop a comment in the comment section and let us know how you went through it, what you did to cope with the grief. And let us know if you've forgotten or not. I know you cannot forget, right? So just leave a comment, subscribe to this channel and share this podcast with someone. It might help them know how to relate to a grieving person, a grieving mother. Yeah, we are talking specifically of uh, mothers who've lost a child. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next episode. Bye.